now because it's only eight bytes or I'm sorry eight bits or one byte we're only gonna do operations uh, compare operations for a single uh, memory integer so in the next function we see if MB 4011 is still high we're gonna compare memory integer 1800 to 1810 if they're not the same MB 4010 is gonna go high now what does this mean we're comparing the vector we just created to a vector called buffer. Now where does this buffer come from? In the net below, we're going to see that we copy 1800 to 1810. What we're doing here is creating a buffer of the last of this scan's uh, output table. We go around the scan, we come back in, we create a new struct into 1800 and we compare. If there was a change from the last scan to this scan, we know we've had a change in our outputs. So we've updated the output table. Now this, what this is doing again is letting us know between scans if there was any change to the data we've put into the struct. In this case, if any of these outputs change, we should expect that MB4010 should go high. Okay? So we're going to use this information to determine when we send the message. If we look at nets 5 and 6, we'll see that if 4011 is high and there was no changes, we're going to run a timer, a 100 millisecond timer, and the output of this timer is to run our send command. Alternately, if there is a change, MB4010 will go high, and in net 6, it's going to run the send command. So the two stipulations we have here, either there was a change to that output table, or 100 milliseconds has passed. We send the information to the EXRC1. Okay. Alright, so the next thing to look at is the EXRC1 program. We'll take a look at how it handles information coming into it. Uh, so I'm going to close this one. And I'm going to open the EXRC1 program. Again, the CAN master for EXRC1 and the EXRC1, these are the default programs we give as examples and the default program that comes in the EXRC1. Let's take a look at now the input side. I'm sorry, we're still looking at the output side. Okay. So, what we should expect to see anytime we're, we're trying to get information specifically from a controller or a device, uh, message arrived from unit 1. This is telling us that the 570 has sent us a message. MB3660 is going to go high. When MB3660 is high, we're going to run the struct command, but notice this time it's in extract. So let's take a look at this. We're going from 1990. This is the address we sent the information to. And we're going from vector to mixed data locations. And we notice that the first is output 32. Okay. Now, this is set up a little differently than we saw in the previous. The default application for the EXRC1 is designed to handle, by default, eight digital input output modules. So if we're sending, if we have uh, many DI8s, or we have TO16s, the 16 transistor output, or RO16s, the 16 relay outputs. By default, we're set up to handle communication to them. We see that we link to outputs 32, 48, 64, 80. Um, this should make sense that we can do this by default, because if there is no output on the 570 side, all we're going to send is zeros. And if we're sending zeros to outputs, well, it doesn't really matter. Um, so it's it's kind of a trick we're able to take advantage of uh, to set up a program by default that's going to work with digital modules. Now the modification we made to this program, we'll take a look at in a minute, is to add an analog input value. Um, but again, by default, this is set up for digital modules. So the message comes in, and the output goes to output 32 with a length of 16. Of course, we had only 8 bits, so we're going to update outputs 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, whichever of those bits was high. Okay. 
Again, this is how we receive and put the information into the correct place. Now, the other portion of this is the check alive. And again, we're going to run the check alive for ID 1. If we don't have a check alive for 1.1 second, we're going to come down and SB3 is a one second pulse. So every one second we haven't, we're going to uh, drive uh, MB4090 high. Now we have a couple special system bits uh, for the EXRC1. System bit 252 is the LED on the EXRC1, which is going to blink when we don't have communication. And system bit 254 is the system bit that turns off all of the outputs and inputs. I'm sorry, it's not going to turn off the inputs, but turns off all the outputs that are linked to the EXRC1 uh, and, and writes them all to zero. So if we don't have communication from the master controller we're, we're interested in, we're going to turn all the outputs off. So let's go online and we'll take a look at this one. Okay, first off, uh, system bit 252 is high. That means the light is, uh, is solid here. So let's unplug this. We can see we're now blinking. And our bus comm light is blinking, and system bit 254 is high, and our I/O has gone to zero. Okay. When we connect the communication again, we take the negative transition and we reset 254. Okay. And the output should go back to the state they were in previously. My output zero, one, two, and three are still high. Uh, okay, so we saw how we received the message. Let's take a look at the hardware configuration of the EXRC1. We see first off, under remote I.O., we have the option for EXRC1. If we're used to using expansion I.O., we'll see those here. And this is what we can use paired with the EXRC1. So we have uh, on our defined hardware configuration, EXRC1. We've set our I.O. DI8T08 is our first module. Again, outputs 32 to 39. We should see vector copy. This is the information that's uh, being written to by that extract command. And then we have an analog module, uh, which we've defined one analog input at MI4, a 0 to 10 volt, and an analog output also 0 to 10 on MI3. Now I've given this a startup value of 2056. Uh, this is a 12 volt, so the values are 0 to 4095. Uh, 2056 means we're putting 5 volts out on that analog output. Uh, and we're reading it back in. I have a wire connecting the two to MI4. And this is just to give us some example data. Okay. So let's take a look at the input side. And what we should see here is something very similar to the, uh, the send commands that we just saw on the 570, except now, again, we're working on the 570 with a single memory integer. We're going to work with an entire vector of uh, struct information. So again, MI2040 CAN bus send status message. We're going to compare it to zero. If it's zero, there's nothing waiting, and we can send messages. MB4092 is going to go high. We're going to run our struct command. This time, we're taking all of the available digital inputs and we're building them into a vector. So this, again, assumes that we can have eight DI16s connected to this module. And even if we don't have eight DI16s, the values are zero. And if the values are zero, they, they don't matter. So again, by default, this is set up to work with digital input and output modules. Now we're building this from mixed data locations. We're going to save it to MI2000. Okay. And you should notice we have total bytes is 16. Okay. So we're collecting all of these into eight memory integers. MI2000, 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now again, what we saw in the previous example was a single memory integer. So we did a, a store command and then we did a, a single integer compare. Uh, in this